T minus 20 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured to flight pressures. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have liftoff of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is clear the tower. Michael Hammersley, materials engineer, and I'm going to talk you through us. some of what you're seeing and hearing as the vehicle continues to ascend. You can tell that we've had a successful liftoff initially. The Falcon 9 has cleared the towers, and it is rapidly approaching uh, what's called maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is known as Max Q. It's when the rocket is pushing seconds. hardest against the atmosphere. Speed 550 you meters per second, downrange distance 2.3 kilometers. You can see the engine plume. Stage one propulsion is nominal. The engine plume widening as the rocket is increasing in altitude and there's less pressure. Over your power still look healthy. MVAC has begun chill. MVAC chill means that the second stage engine is preparing itself to ignite. Shortly after main engine cutoff. We're going to separate the stages and begin the second stage ignition. T plus two minutes, speed 1.2 kilometers per second, downrange distance 11 kilometers. Main engine cutoff approaching shortly. have successfully deployed. You can hear everyone is phenomenally excited here. The Merlin vacuum engine is burning bright as it's moving up to speeds approaching eight kilometers per second. The first stage will soon begin its series of three burns to head back towards Cape Canaveral. First, it will Speaking reorient of... itself. It will reorient itself using cold gas thrusters. It will perform three more burns as it approaches landing zone one. Stage one boost back is starting. Boost back is the primary burn that will get the vehicle moving more Stage slowly is and heading back to Cape Canaveral. Track position of signal.
Man, that is awesome. We are well on our way to taking Orbcom to orbit and that boost back burn, that's the first step of a really intense process to get that stage one back on land, man. Yeah, like uh, so many things just happened. <laughs> my, my heart beat twice, two, two beats since we were on last, first of all. Secondly, uh, there were so many important things. There was first uh, the takeoff, uh, the immediate takeoff, which is just a huge relief. <laughs> then there's max Q, when you have the maximum pressure past that, Huge relief. Then the stage separation. Everyone here went nuts. It's because it's people crazy. here are going crazy. <laughs> um, and uh, and then the boost back. So everything is so far looking great, right? So far so good. Yeah, that boost back burn is going to go on for about 30 seconds, and then it's going to cut off. We're going to flip the stage back around, and as we enter that atmosphere, those grid fins are going to pop out and start the guidance in through the atmosphere. And so we're about four minutes away from when it would touch down, right? Exactly. Okay. Yes, about four minutes away. <laughs> Everyone's really excited. It's a lot here. of energy. Awesome. A lot so of energy. much energy. So much energy. Yeah, that boost, bar, boost back burn is really important because it reorients us back down to the launch site, back down to landing zone one, as opposed to normally after the first stage separates from a rocket, that first, Steve sorry, after the second stage separates from a rocket, that first stage will continue on a sort of ballistic trajectory and crash into the ocean, but we are coming back to land. Uh, one of the things I think that is, is another thing that I just not that intuitive is what it, what an orbit is, uh, and so right now the the, the second, second stage, stage is, is going far right, it's, orbit. Right, yeah. it, it is it is going faster and faster and higher and higher to try to ping these satellites off into orbit. And what that what that means is uh, you're not floating in orbit. Uh, it, the gravity is almost the same as it is on Earth. So what's happening is it's almost like the second stage is like a giant a a, 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 a giant throwing. Uh, the satellites yeah, exactly. as hard yeah, as you yeah. can uh, so that they're going 17,000 miles an hour. So you can basically curve around the Earth. They're falling, but they're going so fast that they're actually curving at the same curvature of the Earth. And, yeah, well, yeah, and I know the same thing. A lot of people I, a lot of people that I think about think of space as just going up really high and right. back down, which is a lot of like space tourism kind of things. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to deliver satellites and stuff like that. They're orbit. super fast, really fast sideways, which yes. is why it's really hard to bring this stage back because the faster you go, the harder it gets actually come back as well. Yes. So and also, you know, being able to get all of these satellites into that orbit, that's really hard. But then 11. having 11 and getting them to maintain their orbit is also really difficult. But let's check in actually with John Innsbrucker for another update on how both the second stage burn is going and also how that first stage is looking too. We're at T plus seven minutes, 30 seconds. Everything continues to go nominal as we like to say here at SpaceX. Falcon 9 continues to power its way into orbit. The second stage is building up to 4.7 Gs of acceleration. Now currently we're about two minutes away from shutdown of the second stage engine to get into orbit. Engine performance continues to be nominal. I'm looking at the trajectory. We're going right down the middle of the track. That's good news. We're right where we want to be. For the first stage, you heard about the first boost back burn. Coming up in another minute or stage so, or coming up very shortly, is the entry burn and then hopefully the landing burn. And you hear the cheering in the background. Hard. Not only do we have a series of maneuvers that we need to achieve in order to get that rocket back down to the, to the ground, um, but it's actually a super complicated thing. Like you did some cool analogies, some cool math to figure this well, out. I, right? I tried to figure out how hard this really is, and so I kind of I crunched the numbers with the size of the rocket and the size and how high it's going. Yeah. What's happening with the first stage is it's like launching a pencil over the Empire State Building, <laughs> having it reverse, come back down, and land on a shoebox on the ground in a windstorm. That's that's what is the critical part. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think I could throw a pencil over the Empire State it's Building insane and catch them. Thing to to do. And the crazy thing is, we're like 30 seconds away from this. From this, from this awesome. crazy the, maneuver. The, the, yeah. This extremely energetic room is you can is a hush. <laughs> Oh, 
LZ-1, the Falcon has landed. Landing operators moving to procedure 11.100. Such a three on LZ-1 beating that and recovering that. Repeat, the Falcon and driver. incredibly an, an exciting thing. Uh, it's important to remember that our primary mission is in fact to get those 11 Orbcom satellites into orbit. There are going to be a series of six separation events and in a moment you will see the first two of the 11 Orbcom Generation 2 satellites separating from the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, we have cameras for at least some of those deployments and those will be coming along shortly <laughs> as, as the mission continues to progress nominally. Um, a couple of quick facts about the Orbcom satellites. Uh, there are 11 of them. There's also a 12th mass simulator, and that's there to just provide balance. Uh, each satellite weighs about 172 kilograms, uh, and it's for a total mass of just over 2,000 kilograms. Uh, for reference, that's about the size of a, a fully grown adult lion. Each satellite, when stowed, is about a meter by a meter by half a meter tall. So about yay, yay, and straight down. It's about the size of a, one of the, the small refrigerators. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's, it's nowhere near that simple. Fully deployed, uh, the satellite actually extends out its arms 13 meters, uh, about the size of a telephone pole. Now, the 11 satellites are mated uh, in three tiers. There are four farthest away, then three, and then another four fairly close to the Merlin vacuum engine. And now the way that we're going to begin deploying them is with the four satellites on top, then the four satellites in the bottom, and then the three satellites in the middle. And we have visual confirmation of satellite deployment. Mission is continuing to progress nominally. We have five more satellite separation events.
Now the reason that we're staggering these deployments is in order to allow the satellites to have some spacing to give them their proper location within uh, the constellation that's going to provide that continuous global coverage that Lauren was speaking about earlier. They have a parking orbit of about between 620 and 660 kilometers in altitude. And we're waiting for confirmation of the next few sets of deployments. Spacecraft 3 and 4 have been deployed. You just saw the two, uh, the next two satellites deploy. Mission is continuing nominally. You'll notice that we're, uh, you can only see one satellite come off the, the actual payload fairing, uh, or fairing adapter, forgive me. Uh, that's in order to keep the uh, satellite and second stage moving in a straight path. If a, and the third satellite deployment, as you can hear, everyone here is just extremely, extremely excited that we both have a first stage that is sitting on ground, and also we are taking care of the nominal primary mission here. It's all about delivering those satellites to orbit as well. The secondary, they've had the... Uh, the sugar on top, or whatever. The very cherry delicious, on top was the first stage. Cherry on top. Well, because uh, the, the the worst thing that could happen is after this incredible moment, if something goes wrong here, it really would kill the, the, the butt. So, you know, we really, you know, want to get this right now just to orient me and everyone up. So, C -E three have been deployed, -E correct? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Out of well, five, three deployment sequences, two satellites per oh, deployment. So right. six have been deployed, which is just over half of them. And now there's two more deployments. Three more deployments. Three more deployments? Yes. Okay. So for 11 total. Correct. And, um, and you're only seeing about one go off at a time, because that's given our camera angle. The other has half of that payload right. time fitting. Ah. You can see there's another satellite as well. That is a live view from space. That is the blackness of space. We are 620 kilometers in space right now. Nothing is cool. I mean, it looks like it's just sitting there calmly, and these things are coming out, and everything's going slowly. When the fact is, these things are going 17,000 miles an hour. Right. Uh, and, and I kind of figured out once that if, uh, if, 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 if you're on the beach and, and something was going this fast out into the ocean, it would go over the horizon and out of sight in a half a second. That's, That's how fast these are going. That's insane. Right? And, and there's the like fourth deployment. It's another the successful one. deployment. There's one more. We're waiting for just the final deployment of the constellation here. Should be about another 20 seconds or so. We'll be seeing that last satellite be separated. This will be the 11th satellite, and that will complete this mission. After we deploy this final satellite, we will then deorbit the first, the second stage. And we have successful deployment wow. of the 11th and final satellite.